Now, let us start with the most simple of these things. This. Pass on the zoom here. This is the ordinary needle holder. This is the ordinary needle holder. Now, the one way to differentiate a needle holder from another instrument, like an artery, is to look at the insides. Now, if you look at the insides of the needle holder, you will find that there are diamond shaped serrations, that is, criss cross. If you find a criss cross serration inside a forceps which is shaped like this, most probably it will be a needle holder. In addition to that, it has a slot inside which is not seen in this particular model. Now, this slot allows for you to hold the needle tightly without making the needle straight. If this slot is there inside, the instrument is definitely a needle holder. This instrument, on the other hand, is the one which you start use at the beginning of the surgery, that is a towel clip. Now, a towel clip is used to hold the towels together and sometimes you grab it along with a piece of skin, which of course should be anesthetized before that. So, one thing that you should know is, sometimes we orthopedicians may use this towel clip to hold together two bone pieces. But there is a certain specialized instrument for that, which looks very much like a towel clip and you should not confuse these two. This one. Now, if you look at these, they look alike. You look at the handles also, they look alike. But when you look at the middle, you know that one of them is self-locking or self-holding and you have something to lock it inside. So this is the patella reduction clamp. Commonly used for the patella but also you can use it when you are reducing the olecranon or even any other piece of bone before which this is suited. Just remember that it has a self locking mechanism. Please don't confuse these two. They look alike. They may be used similarly but this is a towel clip and this is a patellar reduction forceps. Now we come to the bone holding forceps. Some of the forceps are just normal bone holding forceps. How do you know whether it is a bone holding forceps or not? First, you look at the jaw. Just by looking at it, you know that it is meant to hold a bone. Now, what you should look for after that is whether it is self-retaining or not. If it is self-retaining, you have to name it fully as a self-retaining bone holding forceps. You can confuse it with another instrument that is this. Look at the difference in the jaws. This is a bone holding forceps and this is a plate holding forceps. Why do you need two different forceps for the same purpose? A bone holding forceps is used to reduce the fracture by holding the two bones. And finally, after the fracture is reduced, you put the plate over the bone and hold it with the plate holding forceps. And one very easy way to know whether it is the plate holding forceps or not is to look at the inside. Just remember that the bone holding forceps, zoom please, the bone holding forceps has got two symmetrical jaws, whereas the plate holding forceps has got two jaws which are actually almost like mirror images. But this one is shaped almost like a bone liver, smooth inside. Whereas the other side has got serrations on which to hold the plate. Now once the plate is held onto the bone and this is clamped tight using the self-locking mechanism, this prevents the plate from slipping. So this again is a plate holding forceps and this 
is a bone holding forceps self locking. Now, I will just show you how the plate is held to the bone. Remember that this is the plate holding side and this is the bone holding side. Now, once the bone is clamped to the plate, it is inserted like this, held there and then clamped tight. And the serrations here hold the plate tight and you can tighten it here. Once this is tightened, you can actually let go of the handle and the plate will stay fixed onto the bone where it has been held, like so. So much for the bone holding and the plate holding. Now remember that when you are using a bone holder and a plate holder together, you have to first reduce the fracture with the bone holder and then put the plate and then put it with the plate holder. Now, Dr. Mani, who was one of our old processors in Calicut, has come up with an ingenious solution called the Mani's clamp. The Mani's clamp is something that you really do have to respect in view of its simplicity. It combines the effectiveness of both these instruments in a single one. And this is the Mani's clamp. If you look at the Mani's clamp carefully, you will notice that there is a small step on the inside. And what that step does, it holds onto the plate after it has been reduced. This is the step. So let us see how this works. First, you hold the plate, so the bone, with the Mani's clamp. And you can actually manipulate the bone around until it is in the correct position. That the Mani's clamp is used in pairs and you will have one more Mani's clamp on this side. Some people also call it the JG Mani clamp, but the real name is Mani's clamp and it is actually manufactured by Palgard Surgicals. The plane, the, sorry, the plate is then slid onto the Mani's clamp underneath it like so. And once the it is fixed in correctly in place, it is not tightened that much, just a little, and you simply bend the Mani's clamp like this and the two steps that I showed you lock the plate in position. You can see it, it is locked in position. And once it is like this, another Mani's clamp is held on the other side and both of them are pressed down in an angular manner and the fracture is held in position and so is the plate. So here is the JJ Mani clamp, a beautiful invention, a simple invention by an Indian actually one of our teachers right here in Calicut and you can see the simplicity and the effectiveness of the JG Money clamp. Now the JG Money clamp may not always be effective in all cases. It depends on the size of the bone and the size of the plate. If it is not made properly or if the size of the bone and size of the plate are not correct, the JJ Money clamp may not be effective and then you may have to use the conventional plate holding forceps. Another instrument that you commonly use to hold the plate to the bone is the low man's clamp. This is the low man's clamp and even though it is a clamp just like the others, it is a lot different in the way it is constructed. But again, it is a very very simple design. The plate the, is fixed onto the bone like so and you simply tighten the low man's clamp here and it comes down and effectively fixes the plate to the bone like so you can see the low man's clamp being fixed now so much about bone holders and plate holders remember that they may come in all shapes and sizes if they have got a thread and a small rod at the end like this one then it is self locking whether it is bone holding or plate holding and if both sides are symmetrical like so or even if there is some difference it looks like that some people call it as the lion tooth or the lane's bone holding forceps they may come in all shapes and sizes but remember basically as a thumb rule if they are symmetrical it is a bone holder if they are asymmetrical they are a plate holder and again you can see the low man's is again asymmetrical. Now, this 
is another instrument that is again symmetrical in the design in the front. This very similar to the sinus forceps that you use is our sequestrectomy forceps. It is used to hold the sequestrum and just pull it out. You may not be seeing this instrument very regularly, but remember if it has no self-locking mechanism, then most probably it is a sinus force, uh, sequestrectum forceps. And it will be similar to the bone holder in the shape, but again, no lock. The nibbler is the one that is very commonly seen. And the nibbler may have a single hinge or a double hinge to increase the leverage action. So this is called as the double action bone nibbler. You can see that there are two sets of hinges instead of single one. And there is no much difference between a ordinary nibbler and a double action nibbler in the end shape. And that is what you should actually look for. If you look at the nibbler, you act, it is actually looks like two spoons coming together like this. Two spoons. And that is the way that you recognize a nibbler. Depending upon the hinge and depending upon the straightness, it may be a single action nibbler, an ordinary one, a double action nibbler like this one, or it may be something called as a gooseneck or swan neck nibbler, instead of, where instead of being straight, it has got two bends. These are all used in different situations for our convenience, but basically the mechanism is the same. Do not confuse the nibbler with this. This is the bone cutter. Now, you can notice that the nibbler has got a jaw which is similar to a spoon, but the bone cutter is simply shaped like a scissors. And just like that, you can understand that the nibbler is used to nibble off or chew off small pieces of bone. Whereas, the bone cutter is used to cut sharp piece of bone just like that and cut and break it. Don't, once again, I'd like to tell you, don't confuse these two. They both look alike, especially the handles, because both of them have got springs on the handles. But the ends are very much different. So once again, a nibbler and a bone cutter. And last but, but not least, we have our wire cutter. Now, many people call this, call this as the English wire cutter. It has got two jaws and a double action mechanism. The second action is here. The first action is here, where you can use it to hold the wire or maybe the nails. And second action is here, where similar to the bone cutter, you have got two jaws which come and cut the wire. And even though this is shaped like a pliers, it is called as the English wire cutter or basically a wire cutter. We now come to the last of our big instruments which are similar in shape. And this is probably one instrument that is unlikely to be kept for an examination. But this is the basic giant wire cutter, but some people also call it the Harrington rod cutter. The original use of this instrument is to cut the long Harrington rod which is used to stabilize the spine in earlier days and very few people use the Harrington rod nowadays and we basically use this instrument now to cut stainment pins or shank pins in the operating theatre. Definitely as you can see a man's instrument, huge, ungainly, but like I'd like to show you very, very effective. There are a set of instruments which are in use in orthopedics, which tells us that we are descended from basically from carpenters. And that is why many people say that orthopedicians are basically glorified carpenters. In one way it is true that we use the same instruments, but we are basically not carpenters. We are basically more of gardeners who take care of the bone, which is a, like a plant with its roots in the soft tissues. And we try to nourish these roots by taking care of the soft tissues and not like a cabinet maker 
by just taking apart the bone and fixing